Lindor with a bouncer to second. His first time up. He'll be followed by Napoli and Ramirez. And we're happy to have a Twins Hall of Famer, a member of the 1991 World Championship team, and in my book, the best coach any fantasy camper could ever have, <laughs> Rick Aguilera with us. You're pushing the draft for next year, aren't you? <laughs> I just want to get out of the last round. How are you, Aggie? Super. Great to be here. Good. Great to be here. What's it mean for you uh, going back to 2008 when you were inducted uh, down on the field for the uh, Twins Hall of Fame? Uh, and what's it mean to come back and share in the experience for the likes of Tory Hunter and John Gordon? Well, uh, you know, I'm not putting my myself in, in, in Burt's shoes or, or Rodney's, but to, to, to look down the line there and see other Hall of Famers, true Hall of Famers and Twins Hall of Famers there in support of me was really actually I was really expecting that and to see that really meant a lot to me. So I think again, it's the least that we can do to support Tory and Gordo. It's just a great it'll be a great weekend for them. You know it's nice to see Aggie you I know you've been you've come back in the past. Do you enjoy coming back and being part of it? Yeah I, I, I do Bert and I, I, I just I, I know what it meant what it meant for me uh, and, and just my emotions and seeing that kind of support and, and, and I think that uh, it just really meant a lot to me. That's the least I can do is come back. It's great to be a part of it and see some other guys again here. It's super. Well, we're going to show some highlights of uh, of your pitching. 254 saves with the Twins. Oh, you struck out Molly. Molly's not going to like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Twins have a great field of uh, Hall of Famers. Now you were on the field for that, the, the game that clinched the World Series trip, and of course, uh, Jack would let me in the Jack would let you uh, finish <laughs> off the World Series. Uh, quick throw to first, Lindor after a leadoff walk is at first base. But it, it, is that is that the moment when you got the save to uh, clinch the World Series victory, the one that you look back on uh, the most in your career? Uh, I mean, it, it was a very special moment, obviously. It, it, and we were just talking about in the, in the booth on the radio uh, with, with Danny, kind of about our our spring training in, in '91, coming out of you know coming from a last place finish. And you know, every team feels optimistic in spring training camp, obviously, right? But we you start seeing the team and, and the additions that we made with with Jack and Pagarulo and Chili and other guys. I you know feel the this time event, right? Bedrock, right? So, but and, and I, I talked about, about it from the pitching standpoint that. You know, Jack brought this competitiveness that we, I think, we lacked in 1990. You know, kind of just, you know, finish what you start and, and compete and those sort of things. And, and, and that was really, I think, what really kind of as spring training went on. Yeah, you believe it in the first day of camp, but as camp went on, like, hey, we got a pretty good team. Right. You had in that season a 15-game winning streak. The Indians earlier this year had a 14-game winning streak. And going back to your streak, not that you can speak to theirs, we'll see whether the Twins challenge this or not. A quick throw by Santana looked like Lindor just getting that right hand on the bag before Joe Maurer could apply the tag. Well, let's see if the Twins decide to challenge this or not. Joe Bavra will give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thumbs down will continue on. <laughs> so I don't expect you to comment on the Indians and what they're going through, but how much did that long winning streak do toward reinforcing the notion that you guys were going to be pretty good and had a chance of maybe doing something in the postseason? It meant a lot. In fact, we, we, the same subject came up next door. Um, I unfortunately ended the winning streak. <laughs> I didn't bring it up with, <laughs> <laughs> with a double in right center to an ex minor league teammate that I had. Um, Milligan. So uh, Moose Milligan, exactly. Yeah. And um, so, but 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 great moment for us, obviously. And then, if, if you recall, we fill, we followed that up with winning about eight out of ten games after right. that as well. So it was a really terrific thirty games for us. Um, and really kind of just brought it. Hey, we start, really started to believe in ourselves, which you know, we, are we good enough? Are we really that great? Are we going to wait to fall and that kind of thing? But we just kind of had you know, the right people added to the team with who we had. And I think and I keep I always mention about just the, the chemistry and the camaraderie that we had. And that team was really unique, in my opinion, personally for me, the 25 guys, how much we cared for each other. There's another play in that season and it came very, very early on and you, you were responsible for it. The team got off to a terrible start. Sunday afternoon in Anaheim, somebody tried to bunt the ninth inning, and you picked up the bunt, tagged him out. Uh, and, and I do remember that play. Securing the win for the Twins, and that was kind of the beginning of the turnaround. Check swing toward third. Sano has just one play and throws it up the line. And Lindor will go to third. It'll be an air charge to Sano. And Napoli will go to second base, and the Indians 
being gifted a threat here, a leadoff walk to Lindor, and now big error charged to Miguel Sano. Yeah, Sano maybe had a little extra time. Again, you know, he's still young. He's learning that position at this level, but here's kind of a check swing. Watch Sano come in and tries to kind of throw it from the side, and that ball goes up that first baseline. With Napoli running, you can see where he's not even close to first base. Ball getting away from Joe. And Sano will be charged with an error his eighth of the year. And the batter will be Jose Ramirez. Hit a fly ball to Buxton his first time up. Sano even with the bag at third. Mauer a step or two behind the bag at first. And now down and away ball one. Hey, it, I know those winning streak for you guys at 15 came semi early into the ball game, and it's I think it's hard sometimes for fans to realize when you put a winning streak together in April May or June that really helps carry into the late in the season. I, I agree. Bert. I mean, you, you, you think back and I mean admittedly as a, as a player you, you play 162 games and it could be this rain delay in May and, and you just you know you kind of think we just get this game over with it's it's you know it's one o'clock in the morning we've got to finish this game out but you know but how many times in the, in the course of every season you see now a playoff game come down to one game you think about that over 162 you would have kind of sucked it up or whatever you want to say but nothing you're going to just kind of just roll over and fold but there's still some games and it really takes the grind mentally to want to, to fight it out try to get the victory Indians have tied it up an RBI single by Ramirez and now Lonnie Chisholm Hall. Yeah, again, Ramirez be, continues to be a pest to Santana. Now backhanded by Suzuki, 1 and 0. And for Ramirez picking up an RBI, that's his 39th of the year, now has 8 hits and 12 at bats against Irvin Santana. There are certain guys that you face too, like Santana. Ramirez, still a youngster, but good success. You know that as a pitcher, don't you, when you go out there and you boy, this guy, he just sees me good. Yeah. Double play grounder and the team. Twins will hope to get it and a low throw and Bauer can't yeah. hang on to it. Indians get the go ahead run now Dozier yeah. started with a look toward home plate and they'll get just one out when they should have had two. you know turning a double play is a timing thing and right there Brian Dozier for some reason maybe thought he had a play at home trying to get Napoli coming in from third. But as Nunez comes toward the bag, it's a timing for Nunez. Now watch Nunez right there. He might be too close to the bag. He does have plenty of time to set up. And the low throw not handled by Maurer. Possibly awesome. on the time, not just a bit. So now Jan Gomes will bat hit a pop up to Dozier his first time up, and he takes up high ball one. Aggie, we were talking about uh, the Twins playing good baseball going into the break. And then good teams like the Indians right now are able to sustain that. Now, in your mind, because you've been on some really good teams, what's the single most important ingredient ingredient to sustaining championship level play beyond two or three weeks? Well, that's a tough. That, 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 that's a good question. I, I don't. I don't know if it's just it's one particular thing. You know, I, I think a lot of it is is, is going to be health of your team. Um, you got guys that are healthy, and uh, the break is sometimes a nice break to get some of the guys that might be in a little bit to kind of get healthy again. Right. Um, but I think it just come, comes in, you know, coming to that, come to the ballpark every day with that focused, uh, um, you know, intention to win. And sometimes it can be easy to kind of get, get kind of get a little lax as August, September kind of come around. You get guys are slumping or whatever, but if you can keep that intensity. I think that's probably more than anything else. Uh, bringing that attention to the ballpark is what probably carry you through. And finding a way to keep that positive attitude because of the ups and downs of a long season. No, no question. I think that you you know you could be down late in the game, but, but in that dugout you sense a spirit. Hey, how are we going to win this one tonight? And I, and I think that, that that says a lot about a ball club of you know believing they're always they're going to they, they believe that they're never out of a ball game that they they got a chance to come back and win the ball game. I think something like that that kind of attitude. We'll roll over into some victories throughout the season. Yeah, first, most important thing is get the postseason and hope that you're playing well, like we did in '87. I mean, we just were starting to click at the end, and nobody expected us to beat Detroit. Nobody expected us to beat the Cardinals. So yeah, and momentum. We're just playing good. Yeah, momentum's a big thing and carrying that through. Two and two to Gomes. And a tapper foul. Here's a list of, by the way, of the Hall of Famers who will be present. And tomorrow before the game and the Sunday before the game. Uh, Rod Carew, Kent Herbeck, Tony Oliva, Burt Blylevin, Tom Kelly, Gary Gaetti, 
Jim Rance, Rick Aguilera, Brad Radke, Greg Gagne, Jim Perry. Had a chance to visit with him today. And uh, Eddie Guardado, of course. So the Twins have done a nice job bringing in some of the people like Rick Aguilera who are not from this area and uh, make the uh, whole experience special for Twins fans and uh, the inductees themselves. Should be a great weekend. I think you know, having dinner tonight with with, uh, with Tori seems excited about it. Gordo, I was telling a great little story about Gordo um, speaking of fantasy camp, and uh, he taps on my shoulder uh, at dinner and. Uh, oh, what a leaping catch by Bauer! Airborne, he catches the line drive and turns it into a double play. The Indians get two to take the lead. We'll have more from Rick Aguilera when we come back.